Hey, what's up guys? So just finishing up my evening walk here and uh, haven't been doing any kind of crazy intense cardio today. It's just the fact that it's uh, it's been 106 degrees here in Washington. So tomorrow it's gonna be a nice cool 99. So that'll be great. But anyway, um, yeah, I figured I'd pass along some tools that I think you'll find useful for your training. So uh, I was talking with a guy earlier today who um, is starting to get back into his training after a little bit of a layoff and um, this guy operates at a, a very high level and he has two days per week that he can allocate for weightlifting the other days are going to be all cardio and recovery based and um, basically a lot of what we know as far as sports science and weightlifting and things like that comes from uh, USSR um, comes from Germany, a lot of Eastern Bloc countries, things like that. But uh, anyway, one of my favorite tools to introduce people to is something called Prilipin's Chart. And it's just that, it's a tool, it can be used as a, as a rough guideline. Um, there are tons of articles out there that will go into the details of what it is, limitations, how to use it, How's it change for you over time? Um, but the big thing is there's basically one column that is for uh, percentages. And it'll say, you know, for example, 55 to 65%. The next column will say, okay, well, here's how many reps you should be doing per set. Here's how many sets you should be achieving. Here's the range. Here's the optimal number of reps. And then it goes from, you know, 55 all the way up to 100%. Now, the big thing with this, there, there are a few limiting factors, is it's fairly vague and fairly open to, uh, you know, the, the uh, view from the coaches. But the other things to remember here are this, is that when, when they were using, um, when they were tracking every single repetition that these athletes were doing, it was for Olympic weightlifters. And they had you know, let's throw the whole peds thing out because very, like it or not, every, almost every single high performing athlete is on some sort of ped. So we can just say, well, that's pretty much a wash at this point, but they were for sure on peds, no question. They also had access to massage therapists, their nutrition, they didn't have to think about their nutrition. Their sleep was great. They had very low stress. Uh, so then when you try to introduce one of these charts to uh, people who don't have all of those luxuries and they actually have a job and a life and all that other stuff, then you can't take all of those numbers at face value. But it can be a bit of a guideline to kind of dictate, you know, how much is too much. Uh, okay, if we know that it says 30 reps is going to be optimal, well, maybe we take 10 to 15% off the top to account for all those factors I just outlined. But I like to use the chart sometimes when, when it's appropriate um, and then give those uh, caveats to my clients as well and say, you know, like here's our range. We're gonna continue working sets. We're not going to exceed the total number of reps. And I, I take, you know, 10 to 15% off the top. Um, and we're gonna continue doing sets until we see a drop off in terms of quality or we can do you know, speed drop-offs, velocity drop-offs, things like that. But it's just a tool and it's it's a tool for our main compound lifts. It's not for a, our accessory work. It's not for our supplementary work, definitely not for conditioning, but it, it's just another guideline, another tool in the toolbox. So if you're very serious about your training, then you'll start to dive into more of these things that um, different countries, different scientists, different approaches to developing athletes have, have done. And then over time, you'll start to figure out, and if you want to have the best success, you'll need to experiment a little bit. You'll need to try and kind of tinker around and see what works best. How do I know what I'm doing is working? And controlling, you know, introducing a single new variable at a time is going to be a great way to do this. Um, one of the main mistakes that people make is they introduce five, six, seven new variables at once. And then, well, now how do we know what worked? Um, so finding some key metrics to track. And then how do we know if we're doing too much or too little? 
I'm, I'm super old school. I like the, uh, you know, just looking at heart rate, you know, assessing heart rate upon waking, I think is a great, great option. Um, then I use some just jump mats where we will do uh, vertical jump assessments on a daily basis. And then uh, if any of those two numbers start to get out of hand, the heart rate or the vertical jump, then we will uh, make adjustments to our training. But anyway, that's that's just one, one tool I'd encourage you guys to look at and dig into a little bit and try introducing it for your main lifts um, and then see how it goes. So if you have questions, be sure to shoot me a DM or comment below. All right, have a good day.